What's going on guys? I don't usually do front end videos, but this thing is awesome. This history object is pretty cool. Look, look at this, look at this. If I hit enter now, look what happened to the URL. Ooh, this is beautiful. So how about we discuss this history object, which is something I literally learned on Twitter. Uh, someone did this animation using React. Obviously, I don't like to use frameworks. I need to know what's the underlining API. And someone, thank you so much. I need to get your name so I can thank you in person. Hans Roman replied saying, hey, just use history.replaceState, right? So Hans is like, what is history? Turns out there is something called a history API. And this is what I'm going to discuss in this video. How about we jump into it, guys? So if we go to more, more MDN and I just type history, you can learn about the history API right here. And without going through this, this gives you a state on your page, basically. And uh, let's give you an example. So how this looks like. For example, uh, I can do this. History. Just by doing history, you will have this object. And what you can do is you can push a state to this object and you can specify any state value here, right? And if I, like, for example, I say key one, two, three, or one, 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 right? And you can specify the title. Usually browsers ignore the title, so I'm gonna say it's that. And you can specify a URL, say, eh, well, let's say one, 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 right? Just for simplicity, let's do the same thing. And look at this, what happened. The URL has changed to 1111. And if I do history dot, uh, I think it's called the uh, state. Look at this, key 111. So if what, if, what if I push another state 222, right? You can see that this changed. And if I ask the state of the browser now, it's gonna tell me 222. If I do history dot back, I'm gonna give back the original state. Right? And if I do history dot forward, I can go back to the 222 state. And I can as simply just replace the state with pretty much any object I want, right? And say, like, all right, just do a slash. And that will give you to the root. So you can replace the uh, state on, on in place. You can, uh, you can change the state and you can play with that. I don't think, I can't think of a use case, to be honest, to use that stuff, but uh, front-end engineer, let me know what do you guys use this stuff for, unless we're going to use it for animation. And that's what we're going to write. Let's write the code to do animation. I'm going to refresh this beautiful thing. And let's just declare a const array equal array dot from, uh, for example, Hussein Nasser. That's my name, obviously. This is going to give me a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful array. I'm going to just declare a global variable here and do for, for let i equal zero. i is less than array dot length. i place place. What we're going to do, what we're going to do here, guys. We're going to declare a new variable here. And the reason is just to activate closures, right? Uh, my str, my string equal s, right? The current s plus uh, array sub i. So this will give me the first character, then we're gonna concatenate the next character and so on, right? We can uh, keep concatenating this. So we'll do, let's just do this. S equal S this, and then const my str equal S. And we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you why I, I am declaring a new variable in a minute. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, set timeout, I think, right? And uh, set timeout takes a, 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 a second, right? And uh, function. And what I'm going to do is a history dot replace state. I don't really care about the state, so I'm going to just put null here, empty here, and slash blah, uh, plus s, which is I have to do my str. And the reason is closures, baby. If you know anything about JavaScript, if you use the global variable, then you're going to get always the last state. However, if you, you declare a variable inside this loop, then you the closure concept of JavaScript will save the state for every single variable and pass it down the function, the set timeout, right? And uh, one, uh, finally, I'm going to do this a uh, uh, thousand milliseconds times i, which is the counter here. So the first one will immediately 
get and the second will be one times thousand which is a second and the second one will be after two seconds and so on so essentially we're gonna get this after each second so let's go ahead and run obviously i i screwed up for some reason here because i missed this thing all right let's do it again this array the function history this is the end of the function and let's do it that's it that will basically for each every second you're gonna get the animation here as you can clearly see it obviously right mm, beautiful and you can change the speed of this well every time you reset that change the speed to i don't know 400 or 300 that's gonna be faster slightly faster and so on you can put emojis and stuff because why not right you can put pretty much anything right and essentially this will be you're replacing the same state of the browser and uh yeah that's it guys this is a very short video to talk about this uh history object let me know do you use this api at all if you use it what do you use it for i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome guys goodbye